Okay, so we're recording, and this is <laughs> this is the very sensible community technical call <laughs> on the twenty second <laughs> of October, twenty twenty four. Um, and uh, the first thing I need to say is, uh, sadly, Andrea can't make it today because uh, he's uh, got an appointment, and well, we hope he's feeling better very, very, very soon from that. Um, but. Uh, I'm looking, I'm going to go through the, the, the agenda and things. There are no announcements to make. Um, and as usual, Andrea and I just explain what we've been up to and what we're going to be up to at the beginning. I'll do Andrea's segment as well. And then I believe, Martin, uh, you've got uh, some Elvis memorabilia to share with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Talking of the well, there's an Elvis album just above Fabio's head. There, you can see the yes. actual original Elvis album. Right? But yeah, so based on that artwork, we've yes. got something to show. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yes. Okay. So. I actually have one. Let me add one topic. Yeah, yeah, real yeah. Quick. You do that um, while I'm doing the what what Andrea and I have been doing, and then we'll 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 stick that agenda item in. Yeah. So the agenda items are on the next page, Fabio. Uh, the upcoming work priorities yep. is yeah. Yeah, that perfect. You've got it. Sorry, I can see the document into which Fabio's writing his things at the moment. So, um, so last week uh, was PyCon Portugal, um, which took up most of my time, uh, which was a lot of fun um, and lots of really cool um, vibes about uh, PyScript there. Uh, I did the cat disco thing, uh, and there's a lightning talk video where there's just lots of meowing going on. <laughs> Because I put the QR code up. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and also, uh, so this week, my priority uh, is uh, essentially to get a first draft of the new WEN decorator based on the sort of the, the conversation that's been going on about the unit test and things like that. So hopefully when it comes to the PyScript fun on Thursday evening, uh, Euro time anyway, uh, on Thursday, uh, I'll be able to give a quick demo of um, of WEN working in um in a, a winnable way um so that's what i'm going to be doing is working towards that along with a whole bunch of other kinds of uh, you know there'd be meetings and stuff like that, that that's going on and andrea um has been working on the error plugin uh thanks to russ uh, keith mcgee our colleague in the beware team who highlighted uh, um, a, a problem there um so that's now more or less fixed um, and uh, the documentation has been uh, plugged, as it, it should be. Um, some documentation went missing. Uh, um, and uh, we are investigating a bug, a problem, um, that only happens in Safari, uh, that doesn't actually appear to affect PyScript running, but we see an exception where a promise is not eventually resolved. Um, and uh, so... Uh, we love it when browsers have bugs because it only affects Safari. Um, so uh, it, it works perfectly in Chrome and Firefox and all the others. So who knows? We're So we're just on the beginning of that adventure. Uh, and the first thing that uh, Andrea needs to do is get himself a Mac with a recent version of Safari on it. Because uh, mm -hmm. apparently he has, a, he has this ancient thing from 10 years ago, which... <laughs> probably might as well be using a zx spectrum um so that's what we're kind of up to at the moment and of course there's the pi script fun uh that's going to be happening um as well um and then fabio uh fabio uh tell us uh about what you've been up to yeah okay fabio has no just be contact and interaction with oh fabio can you hear me yeah you, oh, you choppy you were just broke choppy. up for a second looks like you're back it... now you're back yeah okay yeah just because it was a lot of uh love with the community um you know um and a lot of interactions it was really good uh but i, I gave a keynotes at both python mia and python brazil um a lot of new people to pyscript and a lot of people that also had a few that have been using it, a few that had seen uh, at the launch and tried to follow for six months, and then eventually their life got um, uh, them elsewhere and then got back. Overwhelming positive feedback. Uh, and from those, yeah, there was 
uh, also showing the flexibility that we have today and uh, the paths that you can have from both, you know, just from really cool data science apps to the, the level of MicroPython and automation and education. I really like a lot of good, good feedback. So uh, I think we're doing a good work there. Um, there. Um, I'd love to digest those two weeks and basically talk with the team. How can we engage more into communities that are um, less tech uh, heavy and are more developing and developing countries and also English is not their main language yeah. uh, and things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to share that a lot of love. I think we're doing a great thing uh, and really makes me feel happy about what we're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I um, couldn't, couldn't agree more. Speaking. Couldn't agree more about that sentiment because I've got inroads into Python Africa who, you know, how do you get a Python environment in Africa is an interesting thing, but if it just works in your browser, you know, exactly. uh, all of that sort of stuff. And the community in Africa, uh, or my experience of it, is that it's exceptionally um, technically really great, but the enthusiasm, it, it's like, I'm going to sound really old now, it's like Python used to be in the old days, uh, you know, when I first encountered it back in like the mid-2000s, right? Um, so um you know yeah such, such enthusiasm yeah the the sentence i've been saying the most like one of the sentences i said the most here was like literally the, these are communities with great talent great passions yeah. but lack a lot of resources um and and you know budget and things like this so they the amount of creativity that this type of thing forces you to to have is a great asset for a project project like us too right like i always say like joking around like uh, the creative brazilian engineering where like people build small cars on top of a box of beer uh and you know like cartwheels and like tiny um driving wheels just to solve a problem, you know, because they don't have the resource, the economic resources to to do things. So I think for us, in terms of PyScript enabling creativity, yeah. those communities can give a lot. So yeah. let's let's try to engage more, um, if anything. Couldn't agree more. Okay. So, uh, Fabio, this is, I'm going to say it just to embarrass you, but, you know, as the creator of, of, of PyScript, you're also one of our greatest ambassadors. And uh, I know from, you know, the very serious conversation we were having just before I started the video that, you know, your keynote went down an absolute, you know, uh, storm. So I can't wait to see when the video comes out. Um, and so, folks, if you're watching this, go Google for Fabio's uh, keynote as well. Uh, you're going to be very as, as well as yours. You were in Portugal. Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, my my keynote wasn't about PyScript though. Mine was about uh, about uh, about well, software development philosophy, as it were. Uh, but I did do the uh, I did do the um, the lightning talk uh, that that has all the cats in it. So uh, that's uh... still go check Nicholas talk. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. well that big hugs all around. It's like the Teletubbies. This. Uh, so... <laughs> So we have agenda items. So these are actually things. Um, uh, so uh, we've got two items. Uh, so Fabio on the docks and we've got Martin showing us Elvis. So uh, uh, shall we do Fabio? Yours is the first one there. So docs ready enough for translation. Should we open a discussion? Absolutely. And I think Portuguese Brazilian should be the thing that we, we trial that with. I, as it happens, I've got a lot of experience with documentation uh, translation and UI translation as well through Mew. Um, so uh, there's a kind of a process that we can follow so that folks, it, it's understandable, it's easy to do, blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, oh. and at times automatable as well because, of course, you've got chat GPT. So, um, you know, if you're wondering how do I get this started, you know, often that's a good way of doing it as well. Um, so let's oh. let's let's create a ticket in the docs repo and just get going um, with it. Um, uh, the other important aspect of that is celebrating people who do that as well, um, because it, that these are the kind of the unsung heroes um, as well. Um, yeah, agreed, agreed. So cool. I'll open a, a ticket there, and Perfect. we go from there. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, Elvis. Uh -huh. well, thank you very much. <laughs> Here we go. 
Here we go. So, so this is. Um, I'm assuming you can see what I can see, which is two pictures I of can Elvis. See a very accurate purple picture of Elvis Presley. It's it's uncanny. It is uncanny. So um, so what this this is just a little fun example to show you that if I click on the this little pixel designer and it's by the way before any pixel designers come in and say i wouldn't ever uh, icon design i wouldn't want to design icons like this and no it's just meant to be fun right so the idea is you click on a cell it changes color and it cycles through the colors of the rainbow every time you do a click right and that's the that's where you can't even choose the color of your paintbrush right you have to cycle it through it's just a bit of fun to show you that these two things are the same PyScript app but obviously running complete running in completely different browsers yeah. and they are talking to each other through the wonder of our channels idea which is the idea of a pub sub event bus you can send messages between your applications or versions of your application or other applications even and these buttons were here just for me to test um so i can clear the whole thing or i can draw elvis the reason this is elvis is because this is a 32 by 32 um grid of pix pixels with um eight potential different colors so i asked claude draw me uh, what's the pixel art for elvis given those constraints and this is what claude gave me so this ah. is <laughs> blame this on claude not me so that's so um that's the idea just showing off channels here i'll just show a little bit of the code uh, let's get rid of this um, actually can i can i suggest a, a nice uh a, a nice live demo exercise uh can you share the, the qr code i i, was, I oh. was just typing in the url so i can join in as well yes i can uh there you go Perfect. anyone interested? Me... okay with my phone let's open it oh who's <laughs> someone someone's drawing <laughs> you can clearly see who is from the video. <laughs> it's that look of concentration. This is me doing art, folks. This is how hard it takes the effort. <laughs> oh, man. Sparkly nose. So there you go. So that's... And the idea is with channels that, that, to show you the code. So this is this is called the Wecon Designer because it's like an icon, only we did it. And um, so it's, I created a channel called Wecon, and then I just, um, so whenever you, um, so so when I when you click on the canvas, what's happening here? We work out wh which cell that you did, and we call this function, cycle through the grid cell color. Cycle through the grid cell color just sets the um, cell in the model to the next, the next one in the list draws the grid cell just to make it a good user experience. And then it saves the grid model. Oh, this, this, there's another point, actually. We're using two things here. We're using channels and the idea of persistence. So our persistence layer, we in uh, we've got this module, which is not publicly available yet, unless if you're watching this video, you can use it. Um, if you work out how to bonus points to you, I call it PyScript Cloud. And we've got the idea of a persistent key value data store. So you can say in your project, there's a data store and you can store it in the cloud so that I can just set like a Python dictionary kind of thing. I can say I can set a value in the data store. So it's using so it's using two things. I load the, the model you've got. So clearing the grid cells, I just set the value of the grid to zero. And then basically cycle the grid cells, colors, pixel art. So you see the pixel art is interesting. I did a little cheat to make sure that I weren't sending trying to send a 32 by 32 array of booleans or integers even um the whole thing is um a 32 by 32 grid encoded in a python integer using bit yeah. wise madness but that's just a geek bit of geek fun to minimize the size of the message that goes across the wire but that's that's really the application code you basically draw your ui the ui is drawn with pyscript.web so i draw grid lines i create a canvas i um and then this is actually creating the whole UI, div, grid, buttons, styles. And that's the, that was the thing. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Elvis has got has grown horns since I've been reading <laughs> the uh, the code. It did, it did bring up 
a couple of things for me. Well, quite a few things, obviously, but we learn a lot of things. The first one, this is just this is just notes getting them out there for us to think about is the when decorator, the event target is still the DOM event. And it feels like because I never use DOM objects, I feel be. like I yes, as yeah. it should be, right? But but I feel like okay, I didn't I didn't write any JavaScript. So this is this is my index.html, right? Yeah. There's there is no H I've just said load me load me PyScript and start my main.py. So my UI was built with PyScript.web. So I've created a div element and some grid, which is just a function to create a canvas so and draw you want some lines. Python object it. representing the, the target. Yeah, I want I want this thing, whatever. I want this grid or this as the as the event yeah. target potentially, right? Um, somehow, some way. That was that was the that was the main thing. Um, these are things I just wanted to mention. Oh yeah, the naming of the module. We used to call this PyScript uh, com on the lib. I just called it PyScript Cloud because I felt that felt more accurate. like more accurate and yeah. friendlier and then right. then it made me wonder though so going back to the actual code of the thing is like wouldn't it be nice if it was pyscript.cloud somehow with some namespace packages or something and so so we could say pyscript.cloud yeah um yep. instead of pyscript have this as a magic other thing what, what once this thing is ready right yeah, i just thought, yeah. thought it might be nice to have the cloud features of pyscript under that um what else? oh yes the other thing oh the other thing is we're using two different things here like i said we're using the data store idea which quacks a bit like a dictionary but not much right now right because it's actually asynchronous because it's actually real time yeah. like you await and you set it it's immediate synchronization right but then it makes me wonder that what we need to make sure that we do is that so we've got data store and we've got the idea of channels, right? With the idea of publishing messages, you just publish any old message on it. But we've got the notion of that inside invent yeah. and we've got the notion of data store inside storage inside PyScript. And it made me, you know, we've talked about this before, but we kind of like, if that was all consistent, the APIs were all consistent only, yeah. you know, from the, from the, so I could write it using all, client side things and then i say oh i need to use i want to use a cloud channel this because you know we've got yeah. the um you know the channels that we've got inside invent for example should that be should the notion of channel be n n maybe not in in the invent layer maybe in the PyScript layer i don't know these are all just thoughts but oh, yeah, consistent yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, data that, that this is uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. This is why we're doing all that work on when and the API, because the work that we've been doing on Invent has revealed a whole bunch of capabilities we want to give to people. But in what layer of the stack should they right. go? And my, yes. my intuition is in the layer that gives most people the benefit. Yes. Um, mm hmm So yeah. But one, one thing that I wanted to make sure I share, I do think um with my pie script hat um this is more a matter of us providing a notion of a namespace package that you know can be extended with yeah. like a dot cloud um, right um, yes yes right. exactly yes just, just another of one of those like pluggable pluggable mechanisms that we want to we want to share that's e it e ex yeah. exactly i mean uh, again this is the web so we don't want to deliver you all the batteries that you're never going to use so um yeah absolutely oh well, actually one more thing before we go so yeah so there's one more thing which nicholas i think this was this is just pilot error but on i couldn't get the zip import to work for some reason so i ended up having to list everything again i don't know if that's something so i was going to just catch up with you at some point okay so the the, the zip file it need the target needs to end in a slash to tell it which directory into which it should be um zipped into yes and I, I i tried like yeah i'll retry that later on but that was yeah, the only yeah. thing okay. i copied it from some i copied one from somewhere and i was like oh and it didn't seem to work yeah. and, oh and then the other thing was in terms of data point i showed this to one of our colleagues matt kramer and he was talking about his experience with pyscript.web because he had written it 
uh, uh, written some examples. And then um, so I showed him this example and he said, yeah, th this is all fine. But what he wanted was something like if you use like dash. So he was expecting something like we have an invent, right? Here's my app. <laughs> here's the here's the content of the app or here's the layout yeah. um you know which, which is where my layout will have some elements in it right yeah and then he was expecting you know the whole basically what we've got <laughs> the kind of invent he was expecting he's he's looking for that layer of simplicity to get started whereas he was like pyscript.web is good but it's very low level right it feels like it's and it is right pyscript.web yeah is still right. not so, so here's here's the thing i i it, it pyscript.web i think is in the right place doing the right thing when it comes yes, to exactly. how do you do an app framework which is i think what matt is asking for we've got at least three that i know of we've got our own invent we've got the oh pi whatever it's called the pi you want one uh, yeah pupi 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 and, L and, and ltk LTK. So that's three yeah, frameworks yeah. built on top, and each one has a different focus. And you know, you know, maybe Matt could create his own. Uh, who knows? Uh, Fabio, sorry, yeah. No, no, you're good. Uh, Martin, are you telling this to get me triggered? <laughs> 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 because you, you know how hard it was for me to actually roll back <laughs> and say, okay, the. PyScript.web is going to just map the lower JavaScript interface. Like in my mind, we miss a middle ground, which is not a framework. It is just an API to the web, to the down web that is Pythonic enough, right? That is limited because you can't have a Pythonic API and cover the whole world. But at the same time, it covers the most uh, used things. Like I don't want to every time go, uh, figure out what's the difference between between text context or HTML or things like this. You know, the display has helps there too. But combining those things, right? Like or just remote clearing a DOM element or like those small things that can be Pythonic, I think it's they are really worth a small, tiny uh Pythonic but, API. Yeah. And I, I still think that goes into PyScript web now. Now yes we dialed it back, we stripped it down so now it's it fully covers the whole DOM, right? And now, yeah. and then we can go into it because we've still got individual classes in there for every type of element. There's nothing stopping us going in and adding the convenience things, which we go, do you know what? Yes, you can do the low level way, but this is a little prettier way, but slightly more Pythonic way, you know, use, you know, maybe context managers where we need to or use iterators where we need to. So I still think there's a layer that belongs in web, but then the idea of an application itself like can that but but i just make me think though right can we make the the notion of application that we've got in invent not so tied to invent maybe i want an application but i want to build it using pyscript.web just divs right yeah. maybe i just want to do, you know divs and buttons and but i still want the whole app the idea of channels. Sorry, Nicholas. I'm no, done. no, no, I'm no, done. no, 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 I, I, no. I agree with everything that you're saying. And this relates to the conversations that we've been having with the folks at Beware, uh, which uh, is a, another open source project um, that's supported by Anaconda, by the way. And Beware is looking at building native apps um, with Python for things like iPhones and on your desktop and across uh, operating systems. But what we've been talking about just so folks know i know you two know this but i'm saying this for sort of to make it um aware so everybody's aware of this the the, the toga api toga is their kind of user interface layer you know the, the closest they've got to like our pyscript.web um so we've been talking to them about finding ways in which say for example invent and toga and pyscript can sort of uh at least I mean, they're very different, so they're going to be different in some sense. But in terms of the basic core concepts, the way they work, the way that you pass arguments in and things like that, they they work in a very similar, if not the same manner so that you're able to move between them. Or you can use, for instance, some of the tooling that we might build for Invent, but actually produce a user interface for a Toga app because it's got the same sort of API where you, we're using the same same um, attributes and, uh, and and call signatures and things like that. Um, but but yeah. I, I, 
I, I think the thing for me as well, actually, have we got time just for me to quickly share yeah. again? Yeah, just go for it. I think I've, I think I've, do you see that? Both times I just did exactly the right amount of clicks in, in Discord to make it happen. I've, I've mastered the Discord user interface. How many clicks was that? It was only 73 just 73. to get that uh, done. But one, one of the things that came clear to me, like one of the things with invent, right? We know that the invent layer had the notion, has the notion of like a, a, data store somewhere where you stay your store your data and then you've got your presentation layer in your ui then you've got your your logic layer, your business logic layer in your blocks right and we were intentionally just trying to design it because we were trying to encourage yeah. not encourage yeah. but just like you know when we when we as developers write code we write it in a particular way there's like and there's pretty much at the very minimum right there's always at least three layers right and so in this particular application there's a persistence layer which is where i store stuff there's a ui layer where it should actually draw on the screen and then there's kind of like the app slash mo mo what we would like geeks would call a model view or maybe a presenter yeah. layer right which kind of glues it all together but those layers are always there pretty much right and instead of having to like what we want to do is come up with ideas that are like uh, APIs and tools that make that easy to build those kind of things and make it obvious. So this right now is a bit of a, a bit clunky, right? Because I didn't want to use classes. I was trying to make it so you didn't need to understand classes. So I'm kind of using Python modules and and globals to be like a class, right? So I set the instance variables on the thing just just to try and make it easy. But one of the things that I noticed was, again, inside all my business logic, we talked about this earlier, Nicholas, you'll notice that there's normal, okay, when something happens, like you click the clear button, there's something that I do at the model layer. Now, obviously, that may actually feed through automatically to the UI layer, but then there's some UI layer thing, and then there's your persistence and your channel layer. And then it's model layer, UI layer, persistence and channels, model layer. Do you know what I mean? It's like when we write, when we write code, we've got programming languages which are far too, like, reform because we don't write decent code in that same way there's a particular anatomy to functions generally right and in this particular case there's this anatomy of and so for me yeah, it's so, like so, so the, to, make, the notion... to make the app work you're going to have to change three things consistently so what are those three things how can we help you yeah and, and those things yeah and specifically these layers, right? How do we make it so that you've got this storage layer, a you know, data layer, storage layer, a UI layer, and then a, a, a coding logic layer? How can we make the tools so that it makes that more obvious rather than just like when I first wrote this, right? I was just working out how to make it work and it was one big slob of code. And if someone had tried to work out what was going on, I'd be like, well, good luck with that, right? And um but the whole point of good code, right, as we know, is that shouldn't be the case, right? Yeah. No murder mysteries, as Steve McConnell said, right? Yeah. And so how do we make, how do we build a layer on top? So PyScript.web is not that layer, right? But the invent layer we've talked about, and or that framework layer being this idea of, here's how we generally build nice applications. The concepts are no more difficult than general programming concepts, right? And so it's like, how can we encourage that? And but it, it sounds to me like when you get to a framework layer, you're starting to become opinionated about this is how we do it because that's how Invent does it. This is how, not Pygmalion, whatever the other one is, Pupi is, does it. This is how, right. uh, and they're trying to solve their problems in the for their different kind of clientele. The PyScript.web sort of isn't opinionated. It's more a kind of right. a, exactly. a, a tool that helps me Pythonically, and I agree with you um, fundamentally, Fabio, that if we can provide pythonic things on top of that we should but i think yeah by by sort of feels a little bit like you know the beginning of the six million dollar man from the 1970s i know i can talk to you two about this because we're of that sort of age where you know we've taken him apart and we've got the technology to put him back together yeah. we've kind of pulled back the pyscript.web to the, its kind of minimalist usefulness and then we can start to take evidence from the community uh, and this is for you folks watching at home to say yeah i would like a clear method or something that will remove all the children so i don't have to worry about whatever yeah. the funky thing is or if i want to know what the textual content is it's this way or whatever um and we can build that 
uh, with the community. This is the important thing. All those Brazilian Pythonistas who are going to turn up and watch this. Yes, and that's the thing, right? You see, uh, the golden rule of API design is that it's easier to to give than take away, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's stripped back now, and um, you can add stuff very easily, but removing something gets very hard because someone's like, oh, I was using that. <laughs> 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 yeah 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 and of course that just for everybody watching at home it's not just pyscript.web that's going to get lots of love we're going to be once the when stuff arrives we'll have the mechanism that will allow us to work with the asynchronous underlying javascript based apis that give you things like geolocation speech synthesis all the fun things that you don't expect a web browser to be able to do but in fact does um and and provide that through a Pythonic API. Um, you know, you can use the when decorator to, to, to make it work nice and easy um, with that. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, we we have, uh, I, 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 have we covered Elvis in? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think you can think, I think that was, I don't think we can make it any more uh, realistic um, in, in. Well, he's winking now. Yeah, I drew I drew a little wink in his eye there, just as I uh, just to finish. <laughs> okay, let me, I'm gonna. You won't be able to see this, but I'm gonna move it over onto. Uh, uh, this is the current state of Elvis for people watching at home. Uh, there you go. Um, so clearly, we've all been paying a lot of attention whilst we've been listening to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're not sharing if you wanted to share. <laughs> no, just, I, I, uh, I said state. yeah, yeah, I know. I, you won't be able to see it, but the folks at home will be able to see it from the recording of my screen. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, is there anything else that we need to talk about before uh, before we close the meeting? Because if not, uh, best wishes to Andrea uh, as well. Uh, we've missed him on this call because uh, honestly, I, I would love to see uh, what drawings Andrea would do uh, with the new Elvis feature. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to stop the recording and it will appear on YouTube in a few minutes.